Hi, welcome back to Nagarjuna Part 3. And we've reached Chapter 15, uh, which is called An Investigation of a Nature to Things. In Tibetan, we can see here, it's called Rangshin Takpa. Okay, Rangshin Takpa. Uh, which means, Takpa means Paricha, which means investigation. an investigation. Rangshin is an interesting word because it means its own face. Shin here means face. Shinre, which means face. So Rang Shin means the, the face of something, which means its nature, which means, and get it straight at the beginning, okay? It means the identity of something, okay? The inherent nature, some quality of a thing which is inside of it. So you got to get this feeling of, we're going to investigate whether or not, for example, fire has an identity or a nature inside of it of being hot. And then that nature kind of opens up and expresses itself in the world. You know, Does fire have a nature inside of it, which is hot? And then somehow the fire opens up and the hotness comes out. You know, it's, it's, Does it have its own identity? So when we say nature here, or svabhava, uh, or rangshin, think about it's sort of a thing deep down inside of a thing, which is its true identity. Think of identity, okay? All right, here we go to our arguments. Uh, first birth. First birth and a half. Rangshin gyudan ken le ni jungla rikpa mayena. Gyudan ken le kanjungwe rangshin chepa chendikyo. If you think about it, if something's identity is part of it, it shouldn't have to be created. If, if the identity of an object is inherent to it, which is what identity means, it shouldn't be something that you get only if something else happens. Okay? You're just born with it, you know, you just come with it, you know. Nobody has to heat up a fire. <laughs> you know, it's fire is already hot. So if it were the case that you had to do something to make the fire hot, then hot wouldn't be the nature of fire. Okay. Are we agreed? Yeah, if, if you had to do something else, if you had to light a fire under a fire to make it hot, then the nature of the fire, we wouldn't say hot is the nature of the fire. So we can say something about nature or identity. It comes with the thing. And it's not something that comes about if other things are there, if other causes and conditions are there. Okay. Rangshin gyudan ken le ni jungwa rikpa mayena. It would be improper to say that something's self-identity were only there if something else happened, some kinds of causes and conditions. Gyudan ken le kan jungwe rangshin chepa chen Because... A nature which was produced by other factors and other causes would be artificial. And artificial is the opposite of nature. Okay? It would be put together and, and given to the fire. Okay. Oh, here, let me heat you up. You know, and then the fire gets hot. You know? Then the nature wouldn't be the nature in the fire. It would be produced artificially and handed to the fire. Okay, got it? Rangshin Chepa Chen. So Chepa Chen here means almost artificial, created. Okay? In, in, in the jewelry business, they have uh, real rubies and sapphires, and then they have fake ones. But when they learned how to make real ruby and sapphire in a laboratory, they had a big debate about whether to call it artificial or not. And the guys who succeeded in the process said, it's not artificial, it's real. And then the other guy said, it's not real if you don't dig it out of the earth. So they made a compromise and they called it created ruby. And uh, it sounds better, right, than artificial or substitute. <laughs> so if it's created, it's not natural. That's the point. Okay, that's the idea. Rangshin chepa chen she jar. If the self-nature of a thing, or if the identity of a thing has to be created from the outside, chita burni ruagyur, then how the hell can you call it a nature? It's artificial. It's created. Okay, got it? Like created rubies. 
All right, the garden. Uh, now this is a story. This picture has a story. Okay, so my llama. I told you I was a volunteer for my teacher, in uh, for thirty years. Okay, and about twenty-five of those years, I was his chauffeur from New Jersey to Washington D.C. It's a five-hour drive, and he used to teach there once a month. So I did that drive. Over 300 times, okay? I drove him down there. If you count both ways, 600 times, okay? And uh, so I knew all the road by, by heart, and I enjoyed driving him because he would always refuse to answer my questions. And in the car, he couldn't refuse. He was locked in the car for five hours, and, uh, and he ordered the car without a radio, so I couldn't listen to the radio. And it cost extra money to order the car without the radio. <laughs> so anyway, all he had to do was talk about Dharma. And then sometimes he would pretend to be asleep, and I'd say, I know you're not asleep. <laughs> anyway, we used to always stop at uh, Howard Johnson's uh, at the Maryland border, Delaware border, uh, just before the Delaware Bridge. And we'd always stop at the same place. And he would order his tea. And you know, he's a big tea drinker. He drove, he drank about 15 cups of tea a day. I made him 15, 20 cups of tea a day. And uh, they would try to give him creamer, you know. And he'd say, no, I want cream. This is creamer. I don't want creamer. I want cream, <laughs> you know. I want the real thing. And he taught me all these words for artificial, fake, not natural. This is all the words I learned from him, which were all my words, they have a context. We were sitting somewhere, and he said, this is called chima. Chima means chepa. Chepa means it had to be created from the outside. It's not natural, okay? All right, so, and he hated this stuff. Uh, dearly, all right. Okay, uh, next verse, it's actually half a verse. Uh, and this is actually wrong look, so what's that mean? This is our position, okay? Rangshin dangni chimindang, shen la tepa mepangin. If something was a real identity, it shouldn't be chuma. Chuma means contrived or artificially created. It shouldn't be like the creamer, okay? It should just be real. Chumin means not, not created. What's a famous chupa in Lamrim? Chuma. Uh, that's where you try to feel like a bodhisattva when you're not. <laughs> and that's a good chuma. Okay. All right. Fake bodhisattva. Created bodhisattva. Artificial bodhisattva. You pretend to be a bodhisattva, and then you still you're messing up all day and stuff like that. Okay. Shen la tepa mepayin. If something were a true nature, it shouldn't have to depend on any conditions going around outside of it. Okay. If fire is hot by nature, it, it, it shouldn't matter where the fire is or where the, what's happening with the fire. It should be hot from the inside, something like that. That's our definition of a nature. And I was wondering, and maybe you guys could think it over, is this takpatasum girikpa? Is this takpatasum girikpa? And that's a very, very useful expression. I remember where I, I was in a debate one day in... Uh, Jebung Monastery, and I heard this word, Tapatasam Gurikpa. Uh, Tapatasam Gurikpa means theoretical argument. Theoretical case? In the theoretical case that something had a self nature, it should have these two qualities. What? Chumin. It shouldn't be artificially created, and it should be Shenla Tapa Mepa. It should not rely on other conditions. Okay? So, can such a nature exist? That's another debate. Got it? So in theory, we say in theory, right? In theory, this is what a self-nature would be. You know, in practice, if, is there such a thing? We don't know. Okay. And, and Choni Lama also expresses his opinion, and this is a very traditional ancient opinion, on what a self-nature would look like if it existed. And it should have three qualities. Okay, here we go. Number one, 
Nyuk Mengo, Nyuk Mengo, Nyukma is a very, very rare, important word that means from the beginningless. Okay, Nyukma. It sounds like Nyukma meaning a bamboo shoot, but it's not. Nyukma means primeval, primordial, since forever. Okay, Nyuk Mengo. It if 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 something is the nature of fire. It should have been in fires since forever. Okay, meaning hot, heat. Okay, if something is the, if fire has a nature, then the, a self nature or an identity, then it should have always been in those things as long as fires were ever ever were. That's the first thing. Okay, fires should have been hot since forever. Number two, uh, no matter. Whether you're talking about a fire a hundred years ago, or a fire a hundred years from now, or a fire in this room right now, it should be invariable. The identity should always be there. Okay. Whether you're talking about fire a hundred years from now, or fire a hundred years ago, or fire in this present instant, uh, that identity should always be there. Okay. Hot. Okay. Number three. Uh, it should not be. Uh, dependent on other sources for its identity. Okay, and he gives an interesting example. You don't have to put a hot water bottle on a fire. Me and Veronica, we have this cool thing now that somebody gave us. It's a uh, cherry pit in a bag. And it has lavender uh, flowers in there. And you put it in the microwave. And you heat it up, and then you lie down on it. And it's very pleasant when you go to bed. For it stays warm for like half an hour or something, and then it slowly gets cooler and you fall asleep. And it's, it's very pleasant. So uh, that's kind of like a hot water bottle. Okay. So he says, you if if fire is hot from inside, and you don't have to warm up the fire with a hot water bottle. Or, or the bun, it's a bunny with the cherry pits and lavender inside of it. If you don't need a cherry pit lavender bunny heat up in the microwave to make you warm, you are probably warm by nature. Got it? Okay. Those are the three requirements. And again, it's probably Tapa Tasangalipa. Uh, here's a woman uh, touching a candle flame. And, you know, one thing you can say about the... One thing you automatically think is, I hope she didn't put her finger in it, because it would burn her. Okay, its nature is to be hot. Okay. All right, next verse. This is some uh, kind of other ideas about identity. If you know, my main thing about identity is those three ideas, but. Let's talk about some other things. Let's talk about some other characteristics of the concept of identity. Rangshen yopa mayena shengin yopa kala yu. This is very complex. Uh, if you think about it, fire has two natures. One is inherent and one is adventitious. Uh, it's color, for example. Me, adventitious means it depends on outside circumstances. Okay, so like which chemical did you, what chemicals are in the wood will make a different color of flame, but the heat is there. The heater is the identity of fire, and the color is secondary. It's a secondary characteristic. The secondary characteristics of fire can be created by other forces. The self identity of fire should come from the inside. Okay. So, it nobody made a fire hot, but you can change the color by sprinkling different chemicals in it. Okay, so, and everything about the fire is contained in those two things: either its natural identity, or it's a characteristic which is imparted by other circumstances, like its color. Okay, shengi ngopo kalaya, and there's nothing else about a fire. Uh, the 
what you call a nature that comes from somewhere else, when the other person thinks of a, a nature from somewhere else, we would say, you're talking about a self-existence somewhere else. Okay, what do you mean? Does the color of the fire depend on an outside source? Yes. Uh, but when you say that, you think the chemicals made the color. Got it? <laughs> Did the color of the fire, is the color of the fire part of its natural identity? No, it can change according to chemicals. If you put sprinkle chemicals on a fire and it changes the color of the fire, that's adventitious. That's, you know, secondary. That's created by outside forces, okay? But, but when, you, when you hear me say that, you think it comes from the chemicals, and that's a problem. You're even messing up the secondary ones, okay? Forget that, forget that the fire is hot from its own side, which it's not. It's hot from your side. But forget that supposed identity. You even misunderstand why it changes color. You think it's the chemicals. Okay. Got it? <laughs> and there's nothing else about the fire, by the way. That's all there is. There's what it is, and there's the stuff it could be. And you don't understand either one. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, there's no other fire than the one which is its natural identity combined with its other characteristics that are created by other forces. There's no other fire than that. Okay. Once you cover those two, that's the whole fire. And you don't understand either one, therefore you don't understand the fire. Okay. All right. Uh, anyway, and here's where he says, you know, uh, you don't understand the Rangshin and you don't understand the Sheng Lu. You don't understand the basic nature of the fire, its own self nature, and you don't understand why it why it's moving or why it has different colors or stuff or why it's different temperature. You don't understand. If the identity of the fire and the characteristics of the fire existed the way you think they do, it couldn't be a fire. If there was no real fire, then you couldn't have the concept of unreal. Okay? If there's no real fire, then it's difficult to define unreal. If there's no real cream on the table, there's no, it's difficult for my teacher to say, that's fake cream. The, the powder is fake cream. If, if he's never seen the real cream, he can't... The real cream defines the fake cream, and the fake cream defines the real cream. And you don't... He doesn't smile and say, ah, real cream, if he never had the danger of having fake cream. You get it? <laughs> okay. And it was always my job to talk the, the waitress into giving him real cream. Oh, my God. Sometimes that took half an hour. Uh, okay. Uh, when something changes into something else, we already talked about it. When milk, for example, transforms into yogurt. Kewoma means people say, people in the world say. Kewoma means people in the world say. Then what do they say? It's not what it used to be. When milk changes into yogurt, how do people talk about the milk? They said, well, it's not what it used to be. Now it's all hunky. And before it was fluid, you know. And if you could say about a thing that it used to be, then it doesn't have a nature. That's not what it used to be. It's not what it used to be means whatever changed wasn't inherent, was not its identity. The milk, the, the <laughs> when I look at the yogurt, I say the milk, the, there's not, it's not milk anymore. When you say it's not milk anymore, you're saying something about the identity of milk 
You're saying that it can end. You're saying that it can drop its identity. Then it's not inherent, is it? Then it must be coming from somewhere else, right? Then it doesn't have an inherent identity. All it has is these other characteristics that are created by outside forces, such as your seeds in your mind. Got it? <laughs> okay. Then the picture is a real cream. And I, I always see my teacher smiling when I look at the real cream. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go to the next verse. This is this typical Kanda uh, Shen those are the two things Rangshin and Shen Rangshin means its identity, its natural identity. Shen means its additional characteristics added on by other circumstances, okay? Dang, ngu dang ngu me ni wa. Is it fake or is it real? Okay? Is it real cream or is it creamer? Okay? Is it something made from a cow that tastes delicious or is it something created by powder? Okay? So he's making two, two sets of distinctions here. Uh, its identity and its extra characteristics that are variable, and then uh, the real milk and the fake milk. Okay, two sets of differences. Two differences. Okay, two sets of differences. When I describe them to you, Nagarjuna talking to the other guy, you still think they're all self-existent. Okay, when I say real or unreal, and by the way, I'll ask you a question. Is it true that real can only be defined by the unreal? Is it true that identity, natural identity, can only be defined by characteristics which come and go? Is it true that you have to see short to perceive tall <coughs> in Buddhism? <coughs> Because, because a lot of people will tell you, <clears throat> and I see this all the time, there's some Burmese school or something uh, in America, and they're always talking about uh, emptiness as meaning uh, the result of comparison, that nothing is real by itself because it has to be compared to something else. Is that emptiness? Is that dependent origination? It's not. Okay? It has nothing to do with it. Okay? <laughs> that whole explanation of emptiness is ridiculous. It's, it's, Tall is not defined by short. Tall is defined by the seeds for tall in your mind. That's all. <laughs> you can have tall without short, because you can have seeds for tall in your mind without short. Okay? It, tall doesn't depend on short. Tall depends on what you did yesterday to somebody. <laughs> okay? Got it? <laughs> Things aren't what they are by comparison. Real is, real is not defined by artificial. In, in Buddhism, in real Buddhism, and uh, identity is not defined by temporary coming and going characteristics. Okay? Identity is defined by your seeds. Okay. All right. Dena uh, Sangitembala. If you think uh, big is only big by comparison, or identity is only identity by comparison to adventitious or coming and going characteristics, People who say that, they not. Sangay Tambala, they need tonga mayan. They didn't tongue they need tatva. Tatva. Yeah, they didn't see emptiness. They should, you know, suchness. They didn't see tatva means suchness. Here. Okay? If you think things are only what they are by comparison, in a way, then you're thinking that identity comes from its own side, or identity comes from the side of comparison, and then you don't understand the nature of things. It's a joke, get it? Yeah. <laughs> you don't understand the nature, the real nature of things. Day ni, you know, the real nature of things. It's a joke. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, as taught in the Buddhist teachings, Sangya Dhammala, 
in the third life. Okay? You don't understand the Buddha's teaching. Okay? And uh, I don't know. I got this picture for you guys. These are three guys with blindfolds on, okay? And these are the guys who think uh, they have wrong ideas about identity or self-existence. And they're kind of wandering around in the dark. And I just wanted you to see this picture because I want you to appreciate why does Nagarjuna keep saying they don't get it, what the Buddha said. They don't get it, what the Buddha said. Historically, why do you think he might be hung up on this point? For $100. Historically. Historically. Yeah. Why does he keep coming back to this theme of you don't get what the Buddha taught? Oh, yeah, good. You got 50 bucks so far. <clears throat> Jigme oh. said there was another system that contradicted. Right? So it was popular for how long? For 50 dollars? For the second year? 700 years. Abhidhamma. Yeah, Abhidhamma for 700 <laughs> years. People misunderstood. They quoted Buddha. They memorized Buddha. They, they could memorize. They could recite all those books. And according to Nick's text, Professor Nick's text, Buddha kept, you know, the Abhidharma Sutras, they also describe emptiness. Okay? Nagarjuna proves in the 60 verses that, that the original sutras that we call Hinayana also talked about emptiness. He proves it. Okay? So imagine how frustrated is Nagarjuna. He's bucking 700 years of misunderstanding. He's trying to stand up in front of a 700-year tidal wave, you know, by himself. You know, hey, guys, it's all wrong. You know, <laughs> you know? And uh, so he has to keep going back to the scriptures and saying, you don't get it. You guys just don't get it, you know. That's not what he meant. Okay, got it? Can't you hear 700 years of frustration in his voice? I don't know. <laughs> All right. That's the blindfold I'm supposed to remind you of. All right. Uh, now we shift to a major, major topic in Buddhism. Extremely important. And I'm sorry it's halfway through the, the last class for today because everyone's tired, but here we go. Uh, very, very Nagarjuna. Very important. Very important for the two husbands in the kitchen. Okay? Uh, Chomde, uh, Bhagavan, the Buddha said, uh, he understood Kimba. The Buddha understood the difference between ng and ngme. Ngme, ng and ngme here means the real and the unreal. Okay? The Buddha understood the difference between real and unreal, okay? The husband in the kitchen who's real and the husband in the kitchen who's unreal, he understood the difference. And in a book called Personal Advices to Katyayana, this is one of his favorite disciples, okay, Katyayana. Katyayana is very, uh, very important in the, in the sutras about the wheel of life. Uh, he, he's there when they first paint the wheel of life. He, he, then he comes home and tells the story. Okay. So anyway, uh, Buddha gave private advices to Katyayana. I went looking for them. You find some, but they're not clear. Okay. The Buddha denied that things could exist, and the Buddha also denied that things could not exist. Okay. The Buddha denied that things exist, and he denied that things can't exist. Okay, all right? And that's really a big Nagarjuna thing. Very, very important. It's very helpful in the two husbands in the kitchen for a hundred dollars. Where's the deny something exists and deny that something doesn't exist? In the kitchen. You gotta get both to get the hundred dollars. What's what does exist in the kitchen? And what doesn't exist in the kitchen? The husband you created. The husband you created exists. And the husband you didn't create. Yeah, and the husband who's not your fault don't exist. 
to say that the one that don't exist does exist is called the extreme of existing. And to say that the one who does exist doesn't exist is called the extreme of not existing. You went too far. There's, oh, if the kitchen, if the husband in the kitchen is not my fault, he don't exist. Uh, sorry. If the husband in the kitchen is not his fault, he don't exist at all. Got it? And because the husband in the kitchen is my fault, he does exist. So the husband exists and doesn't exist at the same time. To deny that he exists is a problem. To deny that the husband who's your fault exists is wrong. And to deny that there's any husband in the kitchen at all is also wrong. Okay. Got it? Two extremes. We call falling off a cliff. In fact, the picture here is of a bridge uh, threading. I, I, I was trying to find one and I, was, I got lucky. You know, uh, you tr this is called middle way. And you're trying to thread your way through doesn't exist and does exist. Okay. If you think the husband who's not your fault does exist, you fell off one side. If you think there's no husband at all, then you fell off the other side. Okay. And here is the great reference to that idea in all of Buddhist scripture. It's here. Okay. Yay. Okay. Which means a good place to throw in a Sanskrit lesson. And I researched uh, the extreme of saying he exists from his own side and the extreme of saying he doesn't exist at all. Okay, so those have special technical terms in Buddhism, which is called yupita and mepita. Okay, yuta, meta. Say yuta. Yuta. Meta. 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 Yuta. 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 Meta. 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 Yupita means the extreme of saying he exists from his side and not because I yelled at my kid. Okay. That's called, by the way, I'm really thinking the next book I write, I'm, I am going to write the Two Husbands Sutra. Okay, so Buddha, it's called Bhuta Koti. Say Bhuta Koti. Bhuta Koti. Bhuta Koti. Okay. Bhuta means he exists. Koti means extreme or cliff. Okay. Koti means cliff or extreme. Uh, Koti also means 10 million, but that's a different thing. Okay. Uh, okay. So Bhu, Bhu means to be. And it came from, in Indo-European, it's called Biu. And we get the words be, build. Where is that Sanskrit lesson? Oh, I'm sorry. I must have left it out. Oopsie. Uh, build, be, build, and physics comes from that root, bu. Physics also, the f in physics comes from bu. Okay, puti. Okay. Uh, koti, I couldn't find much except cut, which means angle, sharp angle. Something you fall off. And Kotika is the Mu in Mushi Musum for $30. Mushi Musum. Mushi Musum. Mushi Musum. You know Mushi Musum. Yeah, uh, what do you call them? P permutations. Four permutations. Okay, so 20 bucks for that answer. It means uh, four, uh, it's like a, a, you're on a table with four edges, <clears throat> four possible combinations. Okay, koti. That's called kotika. All right, good. Then the opposite is, what's the opposite, Christina, of bhuta koti? A bhuta koti. <laughs> okay, a bhuta koti. Uh, which means the extreme of thinking, if he's not coming from his side, he doesn't exist in the kitchen, which is also another extreme. Which of those two extremes is learned and which of those two extremes is inherent in people? Uh, the, the classical answer, okay, I guess you can chew on it, is that the extreme of saying he doesn't exist at all uh, comes from a bad explanation of emptiness. Yeah. That's all. That is normally learned. You know, if he's not what I thought he was, then he doesn't exist at all. Is 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 most often said by people who didn't understand what emptiness 
Yes. Okay. All right. Here we go. Let's do some more. Uh, next part. Kyote Rangshin ki yena deni meni mingyuro. Okay. Rangshin shen de gyumani namyan tepa mingyuro. This is two separate thoughts, and they are wrong. They are our own system. Kyote Rangshin ki yena. If any entity existed to some nature of its own, which means the kind of identity we've been talking about, all right, then meni uh, mingyuro. It could never change. Okay, if its identity was inherent, it could never change to something else, which means it could never stop, because that's also changing. Okay, so if if things had a an identity of their own, because the identity is permanent, the thing could never stop, because it had a permanent identity. It's a very interesting idea. Okay, and he says. It would be like dam kam mi dipa. What's a dipa, Tim? Do you remember dipa? Dipa, dipa, ma dip, ma dip, dipa. Uh, to uh, obscure, oh. to cover. Okay. Then uh, he says, Choni Lama says, dam ka mi dipa. What's that? What's dam ka? Sky. This, no, not sky. Space. Empty space. You gotta say empty space. Four kinds of space, right? You gotta say empty space. Never changes. He says, then everything. If things had identities, then because the identities never change, those things could never change. Because if they change, they would lose their identity. And then that also means if the identity lasts forever, the thing would have to last forever, and it would be like empty space, which lasts forever. Whether the Earth is in that space. Whether the planet Earth is in that space, or whether you destroy the planet Earth, the space is always going to be there. Madhip means it's open and cannot be obstructed. Okay. It's not like a box; it's like the space. Rangshin shen de gyoen in namyan tepa mingyuro. Okay, so if the identity of a thing never changed, the thing would last forever. If the identity of a thing did change, Then that's not much of an identity, is it? <laughs> If fire could get cold, then then what's the use of having an identity? <laughs> okay, got it? Okay. Uh, then the other guy comes, and oh my God! First he puts us, and then he puts the other guy, and he doesn't tell us he's switching. <laughs> okay, here we go. Rangshin yepa mayena shem de gyoba kandiyan. If the milk's nature could never change, then where did the yogurt come from? If the milk's nature could never change, then who who turned into milk? <laughs> who turned into yogurt? Sorry. If the milk's nature could never change, then who turned into yogurt? Okay. And. Uh, Then we say, if the milk's, if the milk could have a nature, then what changes? Okay, it's called Rupa Gotso. Rupa Gotso means parallel reasoning. I'll say it again. He says, uh, sorry, I gotta look at it. If things don't have a nature of their own, then how can you say it changed into something else? If milk doesn't have a nature, how can you say the milk turned into yogurt? If the milk doesn't have a certain identity, how can you say it changed to something else? If if you don't have a driver's license to start with, how can you say you got a fake driver's license? How's that? <laughs> okay, nah, that's the other guy. And then we say, no, you don't get it. If it does have an identity, then it couldn't change. <laughs> Don't tell me it couldn't change if it didn't have an identity, which is his argument. If it's not something, how can it change? And we say, no, you don't get it. If it is something, how can it change? <laughs> okay. Got it? Cute? Confusing. Halfway through the second half, we switch to us. Okay. Thanks, Nagarjuna. 
All right. And uh, I don't know. I forget why I put a, a sculptor here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the idea is, uh, could you change something which was unchangeable or something like that? You know? Okay. All right. Here we go. Don't worry. We're getting there. Uh, the next verse is even more famous than the last ones I told you were famous. Okay, this is the super famous verse. Okay, Yeche chawa tapadzen. Say Yeche chawa tapadzen. Meche chawa chepata. Deche yodam mepala kepe nepa mi jawa. If you think things exist, you are falling into the extreme of thinking that things can never change. If you think that things don't exist, you are falling into the extreme of thinking things never started. Therefore, you, those, those of you who are masters should stay in the middle. And there's middle way. Okay. What's the nickname of wisdom? What's the nick? Yeah, middle way. Mad, Madhyamaka. That's the nickname of Prajna. Where do you see that nickname used for $100? In the title of Chodilama's commentary? Uh, yeah. You're close. <laughs> yeah, enter $100 for Tim. $100 for Tim. Yeah. Uh, Chandakirti did not call his book Entering Wisdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He called it Entering the Middle Way. Uh, but that middle way is called Madhyamaka Shastra, uh, the commentary on the middle way. Okay. All right, so here it is. If you think things exist, then they could never change. If you think things don't exist, then you're a nihilist. Okay. Therefore, real wise men and women should stay somewhere between those two. You should stay between those two. What's that mean in the kitchen for three hundred dollars? Go slow, go slow. This is a lot of money. <laughs> What's it? Where's the middle way in the kitchen? When you understand that if they have been yelling at you, it's because you yell at your kids in that past week. Okay. And therefore, that's that's exists. What doesn't exist in the kitchen? Because I didn't do anything. That I didn't do anything, husband, don't exist. Yeah. So stay between those two places. Okay, got it? Three hundred dollars. <laughs> She's taking out the dinner, Pachi. Okay. Okay, good. Kashi Rashi ki yapa, deni mepa minde ta. Munjun tata meche pa, dena chepa kawangyo. Okay, and he expands on the meaning of unchanging and uh, never starting. By the way, these two extremes, unchanging and discontinuing, these two extremes are described as the results of certain opinions. They're always described as the result of certain opinions. If the husband was coming from his own side, he could never change. Takpa. Okay? And what's the other one? Uh, chepa. If he, I guess if he is coming, oh, if, if, if he's not coming from his own side, he can't exist. Then he just stop. Okay, got it? Okay. All right. And I have a special picture I made for you guys. The middle way to the two husbands. Okay. So if you think he exists from his own side, you fell off the right side of the bridge. If you think if he doesn't come from his own side, he can't exist, you fell off the left side of the bridge. And if you stay in the middle way, you have this happy relationship. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's the last picture of the class. 
Okay. So let's summarize. Um, what was the name of this chapter? We were discussing identity. Okay. Could a thing, could something have an identity of its own? And we, and we decided it could not have an identity of its own because even those characteristics of things like the heat of fire that seem to be in the fire are coming from us. Okay. That's the bottom line. Okay. So there is no natural identity to anything. Right. Hey, okay. Oh, what's that mean about Medicine Buddha Mantras? Yeah, suppose you had a bad motivation and you did a mess and did a mantra. I don't know. What would happen then? That's a sign of the, of the identity of the mantra. Does it have an identity of being beneficial? No. If you say those mantras like with a competitive attitude, then they could hurt somebody. Right? Cool. That's the emptiness of the mantras. They don't have an identity of their own. Cool. See you next time. Yay!